Hello guys, my name is Ali. I'm an international pharmacist in Canada. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can become a registered pharmacist in Canada if you have graduated from a different country. Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about the pharmacists who have graduated from anywhere but North America. The procedure of becoming licensed in Canada is made up of eight different steps. I'm going to talk about overall steps in here, but in upcoming videos, I will be talking about the duration of time and expenses required to fulfill the whole procedure. The first step is a pharmacist gateway. Just simply search it on the Google, Pharmacist Gateway Canada. Uh, it is a mandatory first step in the procedure to become a licensed pharmacist in Canada, except in the province of Quebec, of course. It provides a national ID, uh, which is required to apply to the Pharmacy Examining Board of Canada, also known as PBC for document evaluation. It also uh, creates a profile where you can track your progress uh, during the licensure procedure. Here you are creating your profile and getting your national ID. The second step is document evaluation. And in the document evaluation, simply enter into PBC website, which you are able to find from Google. After you receive your national ID from Pharmacist Gateway, you will submit your application and documents to PBC because PBC will evaluate your documents to ensure you have a degree in pharmacy that is acceptable according to uh, Canadian standards. The minimum requirement is a four-year undergraduate degree in pharmacy. You must pass document evaluation before you qualify to apply for evaluation exam. And the details about timelines, items to submit to PBC, how to properly uh, certify documentation and translation, everything I will be talking in upcoming videos, of course. Step three is evaluation exam. Evaluation exam by far is recognized as one of the most comprehensive and challenging exams in the world, not only in Canada. And detailed information about that will be explained in evaluation exam section. As I said, this is just an introductory video about the steps to be taken to become a licensed pharmacist in Canada. Well, there are different parts uh, and the topic areas are clarified in the website, like by medical sciences, pharmaceutical sciences, uh, and pharmacy practice, which is made up of clinical sciences, professional uh, practice skills, and the, the percentages that is expected in the exam, uh, behavioral sciences, and uh, like biostatistics, also uh, pharmacoeconomics. Everything from the first year of the pharmacy until the last year of pharmacy is being examined in evaluation exam. And the next step is qualification exam part one. Only, th th this is a ladder, this is a ladder. The next step, every next step can be done only if you have taken the previous step. Without registering into Pharmacist Gateway, you will not be able to do document evaluation. Without doing document evaluation, you will not be able to go to step three. Without passing evaluation exam, you will not be able to, to do your MCQ or a qualification exam part one. Qualification exam part one is mainly therapeutic. It is about 50% management, uh, therapy management, and different types of uh, management cases, and 50% therapeutic cases. Next step is step five, qualification exam part two, also known as ASCII. Actually, step five and step four can be done together if it is your first attempt. So in the first attempt, you can uh, take these two exams together. About ASCII, I have provided some videos. You can simply go to YouTube and uh, type in PharmaPass ASCII. The first videos are mine. 
Uh, I have explained what is expected in ASCII, what is the setting and what you have to do, how to use the material and everything. Well, the next step is language proficiency after you have passed all these steps and you have laddered up. Now you have to do your language proficiency either in French or in English. If it is in English, if you're going to take IELTS exam, usually IELTS academic overall 6.5 is satisfactory. If you're going to do French, there are still criteria for that. And if you are going to do your licensure in Quebec, there are also criteria about that, uh, about which I will make a video so you can have a good idea about the Quebec pathway. Then there comes IPG and training. Well, each provincial and territorial jurisdiction in Canada has its own licensure requirements. After you pass all these exams, then you will choose your province. For example, if you choose province of Alberta, you have to take a course which is mandatory. It is called IPG course, which is short form of international pharmacy graduates. The duration is about eight to nine months or 10 months. The, the cost is about $15,000 and it is a mandatory course. Uh, the same is for British Columbia or Vancouver. If you have not passed MCQ or OSCE in the first attempt, it is also a mandatory course in Ontario. But if you have passed them in the first attempt, it is not a mandatory course. But then Ontario has a program that is called PACE, PACE assessment, uh, that, that is not available in the other provinces. So what I mean is basically every province has its own criteria. The other exams, evaluation exam, MCQ and OSCE, they are federal exams. It is the same all over Canada. But after passing them to accept as a pharmacist, each province has its own criteria on top of that. So after all these exams, if you're in British Columbia, you have to take this IPG course. If you're in Alberta, you have to take an IPG course. If you have not passed any of these exams in the first attempt uh, and you're in Ontario, in Toronto, you have to take IPG course. Some provinces do not have IPG courses. For example, Nova Scotia, but it has about five to six months of training that you have to do training. Of course, there are non-paid trainings. The next step is jurisprudence. Jurisprudence is the law. So laws regarding pharmacy practice, including dispensing drugs and the ethics of professional practice. Uh, these laws are different from province to province. In some provinces in Canada, you can write prescriptions. In some provinces, you cannot do that. In some provinces, you can do injection. In some provinces, you cannot do that. In some provinces, ibuprofen 400 milligram is over the counter. In some provinces, it is behind the counter. So there are some differences in terms of practice from a province to province. So if you're going to practice in a specific province, you have to take this jurisprudence exam, which about uh, the laws and regulations that is being practiced in that province. Well, the last one is licensure. So after all these eight steps, finally, congratulations, you're getting your license and you're able to practice.